And today on Ozarks History, we will discover how one little cemetery in Mountain Home, Arkansas can connect across the United States to the Eastern Seaboard, including Maryland, Virginia, Tennessee, Southern Illinois, Northern Arkansas, Marion County, Baxter County, all the way up to Stone County, Missouri, including Silver Dollar City. Are you ready to unravel all of this? Join me now on Ozarks History as we dig into the Talbert Casey Cemetery. Let's go. Hello everyone and welcome to Ozarks History. Vincent Anderson here along on the journey with, with you today. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna walk through this little cemetery. Um, as I mentioned before, this is in the middle of a residential area. Uh, there are houses, sub, this is a subdivision, Indian Creek subdivision that surrounds us. Um, houses all around. Houses have just built up around this little small cemetery. Um, we could term it as abandoned, but a lot of times when you hear the term abandoned, that means no one takes care of it at all. Um, it's just kind of left uh, to just wither away and grow up and overgrowth with uh, trees, shrubs, leaves. And I will say here in Baxter County, we have a sheriff's department that is dedicated to taking care of the cemeteries that are no longer that no longer have caretak caretakers for them. And that's what's going on here in Baxter County. Now, this cemetery is called the Casey Talbert Cemetery. It gets cleaned a couple times a year. We have guests who stay at the Sheriff's Department overnight because they might have some small infraction or large infraction, whatever they have, they're working off. <laughs> but the guests uh, load up um, on good behavior. They come out to different cemeteries in Baxter County. And these guests, uh, they use rakes, hoes, weed eaters, lawnmowers. Um, they burn leaves sometimes, uh, down limbs. And that's what's, that's what's going on right here. Um, we don't have this right now. We are in February, towards the end of February. And if you look, we have some down limbs from a recent uh, ice and snow. And so those will get cleaned up in the future. But the Sheriff's Department does a really good job of it. And I would like to thank Sheriff Montgomery as the Sheriff and Captain Jeff Lewis. Uh, they, uh, Captain, Captain Lewis, I'll tell you what, he does a really good job getting things done at different cemeteries. Um, now we're in the middle of the Casey Talbert or Talbert Casey Cemetery. I wanna show you a few things that are going on out here. If you come out here, it looks a mess. Uh, the, well, you got leaves here. Now, the reason I come here in February, I don't do ticks and chiggers that well. Ticks and chiggers are down, snakes are down, so I will go out in cemeteries like this with a lot of leaf growth that you're gonna see here in a moment. Ticks and chiggers in this area, you can, you, you can attract quite a few ticks and chiggers. Um, also some snakes, but it's the ticks and chiggers I don't care for. I'm standing by a significant grave plot right here. Um, the grave is pretty unique. It has two burials here. There's some more burials be beside it, but there's a pretty prominent one right here also. Um, it's gonna be ended up being a stair step crypt, and on the top it's capped off with a stone, a long stone that's in the shape of a coffin. It's made out of sandstone from this area. It's, it's natural, uh, it's native to this area, the sandstone is, and so to actually have that carved out um, I'm, it's pretty impressive. It has been disassembled. You never know what happens in 170 years uh, in a cemetery. There could be vandals, there could be hogs knocking things over, cattle. Who knows what happens, but uh, it'd be really nice to get this all stacked back together. Maybe I can talk to some people that's got some strong backs to help me out do that, to come out here and help me do that. But I do wanna talk about a significant person that is buried here. His name is Frederick Benton Talbert. Uh, he actually went by Frederick. He was born March 24th, 1771 in Orange or Culpeper County, 
Virginia. Now Talbert, as we say around here, can be spelled of multiple different ways, a myriad of ways. Uh, and it can be pronounced a little bit different too, because it could be T-A-L-B-O-T, T-A-L-B-O-T-T, T-O-L-B-O-T, T-O-L-B-O-T-T, T-A-L-B-U-R-T, T-A-L-B-E-R-T. Boy, there's a lot of ways you can say Talbert and spell it. Uh, so, but Frederick Talbert was the son of Josiah Talbert. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and mention his dad because this kicks us just past revolutionary. We're going back in the colonial times. So his dad was name was Josiah. He was born in King George Parish in Maryland in 1749. He passed away in 1839. Now let's go back to Frederick. Frederick married a lady named Elizabeth Wilholt. To get married in those days, she needed a marriage bond paid. And so Frederick, along with Elizabeth's brother and another cousin that Frederick had, went together and pulled their sources together and they're listed as paying the bond of 500 pounds. Okay, that's, that's, some, that's some cold hard cash during those days. That's, that's a pretty good sum. She must have been some kind of catch. And so he was after to marry her and he paid, he got the $500, five, excuse me, 500 pounds together. Uh, they moved to Illinois, to Union County, Illinois in 1806. By 1811, Elizabeth died. But in between 1806, 1811, she had four children. That would be Frederick Benton Talbert. There we go, we're repeating the father. So we have a junior. Uh, we have Nancy Talbert Hargrave. Now Hargrave's that name pops up here in the Ozarks in Baxter County. We have Simeon Wilholt Talbert, Talbert, Wilholt, maiden name of Elizabeth. And then we have Walter Matthew Talbert. Now I wanna say one thing about collecting all this stuff together. I don't go out and do all individual collection of all the history of all the families just from scratch. If the wheel's invented, we need to use it. And I wanna tell you what, there is one who has actually put a lot of work in to a lot of families of this area over the years. Her name was Cheryl Ripple. Cheryl is no longer writing for the Baxter Bulletin, but she used to write for the Baxter Bulletin. And Cheryl, if you're actually watching this video, I wanna say thank you so much for all the work that you have put in. People still use your research. Um, and I've taken your research and I've looked at it. I have bounced off and gone to other directions, another rabbit hole. So I wanna thank you for, for the wonderful trip. Speaking of trip, Let's keep walking around the cemetery and see what else we can find. There's a one burial I wasn't gonna do, but I can't resist it. I, I just gotta show you this one tombstone and uh, what it says on there. This is Lavisa, Lavisa um, McCary. That's a very old name on the White River, um, but I, I wanna show you her tombstone. It's, it's pretty cool. So we're gonna go down here. We're gonna see her name, but right up here it says, there's rest in heaven. And you can see the crown here. You can see uh, the celestial garments on each side and a finger pointing up to heaven. This is her promise of there's rest in heaven. So she's buried here. Um, reminds me of old time saints from long ago. You know, living through in the Ozarks and other places also, but in the Ozarks, um, a lot of things were against a lot of things were against us here as pioneers um, but i remember in church services as a kid um, they would have testimony services they would get blessed they would get happy and they'd start singing songs and you'd see this crown of righteousness just waiting for a saint in heaven that's that's their goal in heaven that they can win that crown and take it and throw it at the savior's feet they would sing songs like Oh, I remember this song is written by Albert E. Brumley. This is in 1929. It's, it's a classic old hymn uh, here in the Ozarks. People, oh my goodness, people get happy singing it. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a land on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. And when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. 
Oh, they wouldn't sing that one time or twice. They would go through all the verses and boy, they would crank that course up and they would go over and over again. And uh, the promise and hope that just that one song would fill people in their heart, that they, they, they would fill their heart up. Just that promise of someday I'll fly away. Well, I think these people here have been buried, prepped and ready. They'll fly away too. They know their Lord and Savior. You know, in the past, I've had people ask me different questions about how I uh, do videos and everything like that. I am a historian. I've been, went to school, got a grad degree in American history. I know how to read the academics part of it. But on this channel of Ozarks history, I think it's a, it's, it's not a favor toward those who are wanting to learn about the culture of the Ozarks that you bleach everything out about religion. And I was raised in a very spiritual home and it was part of the Ozarks culture. I'll just be honest with you. In my culture, it was part of my Ozarks culture. Not everyone was religious in the Ozarks, but everyone knew about church and it was an influence. If you're gonna have a community, you're gonna have a general store with a post office, you're gonna have a school, you're gonna have a church. <laughs> and a cemetery that makes a community but the church was part of it it was a gathering place uh, and so as a historian i am not going to bleach out everything about religion i am going to if it's part of the ozark culture if it's something that we need to delve into to explore the flavor and taste of the ozarks i'm going to do it and religion is part of that and so i'm not ashamed to go into that area there and in the future, I will just keep doing it again. Um, just because people in the Ozarks were religious doesn't mean that they were perfect. As a historian, I can look back and I can find a lot of imperfections. I can find things in the 1800s that I would not do. But you know what? If those people were alive today and they looked at my life, they would look at our culture. Would they approve of what we're doing either? And so sometimes um, when we start looking at history, it kind of gets subjective that we want to put it to our opinion and our flavor and our liking. You know, we don't know, we, we, we can study history, but we don't know everything about them. We have not walked in their shoes. Uh, in Ozark's history, I try my best to walk in the shoes of those who came before me. But there are some things that are foreign to me that they understood more than I will ever will. And it's vice versa. And so do I approve of things back then on everything? No, I don't approve of slavery. I'm very much against it, but I think it's something in the culture that we need to understand also. So we are going to look at slavery in the Ozarks. Uh, we're gonna look at religion in the Ozarks, how those two things work together, how that topic divided people it divided churches hey that's why we have southern baptist churches okay that's that's why we have southern baptists they believed in slavery um they don't now but that's what happens um people divide i've seen divisions in communities small little communities i've seen divisions in churches hurts my heart um, everyone thinks they have a great point of view i think i've got a great point of view it's not always true. <laughs> I can look back from years from, from now and go, oh, why did I think that back then? We learned. So I encourage you, wherever you're at in your walk in history, even in Ozark's history, take a moment, sit back and reflect and learn from those in the past. Oh, my Ozark friends, welcome to this area. This area right here is my goal. This was my goal for coming here, even though we have some wonderful other stories here. Cannot cover all the stories, but this story right here that these two people have, wonderful Ozark story that makes connections, not just here, but also in Southern Missouri. So this is Simeon Wilholt Talbert. He actually went by Sim. His middle name is Wilholt. His mother's name is Elizabeth Wilholt. That was her maiden name before she became a Talbert. So he is the second child um, in the family and he was given his mother's maiden name. Kind of 
happened quite often in Tennessee. That happened three times in my family during that same time period with my fourth great grandfather. But his middle name is Wilholt, family name from his mother. Green County, Tennessee, 1852, he passed away. Green County, Tennessee, he was born. So his wife was named Mary Francis Talbert. This right here says Fanny. Fanny is short for Francis. What is Fanny's maiden name? Fanny Francis Yoakum. Ha <laughs> ha! We have the Yoakums. Yoakums are so influential in the Ozarks. So Mary Francis or Franny Yoakum Talbert. She was born 1802 in Kentucky. Now she passed away in November 25th, 1886. Um, the problem is we have that on Find a Grave of 1886. The tombstone says 1889. I'm gonna just bounce between the two and be happy with both. I'm just, I'm just very tickled that she's here with her husband. She, Fanny, is the daughter of Jacob James Yoakum. Jacob James Yoakum was born in 1768, passed away in 1845. He was, he was very influential up in Southern Missouri on the White River, the James River. Um, here's what happened. He would he was in Tennessee. He would travel from Tennessee to Southern Missouri. He was working with an alliance and he was trading with the Delaware tribe on the James River, the White River, that whole area through there. And in Stone County, Missouri, he found a mine there that they were actually using. Um, some people kind of dicker back and forth. It was a lead mine. It was a silver mine. Well, he purchased that in 1813. And so we have the White River, Stone County, Missouri, the Yoakum Silver Mine. And have you ever heard of the Yoakum Silver Dollar? If you have not, we will talk about the Yoakum Silver Dollar in the future. There is legend and myth, and there's some other things being behind that, but we're gonna dive into that. Uh, just a wonderful story. And for those who know all the history, don't poo-poo everything. Just uh, just enjoy the heritage that we have with this. And with the Yoakum Silver Dollar, this is where we get the legend in Stone County, Missouri, Silver Dollar City. And so there's our Silver Dollar City connection. Now, Fanny Yoakum had a brother. He was born in 1799. His name was Mike Yoakum. Mike Yoakum um, actually made some chronicles of Silas Turnbow. There is a story called The Death of Mike Yoakum. It's a, it's a pretty sad story. It's, it's a gut-wrenching story. So what happens in 1862? 1862, Mike Yoakum is 63 years old. In November, he was captured, kidnapped. He was taken to Springfield, Missouri. Uh, he was put in the, federal, the Union Federal Prison for being in the South. He had Southern sentiments, probably. And so he was put in prison at age 63. During that time, let's just back up. That was in November. Let's back up just a second. October, we have the Union Army coming down on a raid down into Raps Barron to here. Uh, they raided out, uh, they had the cavalry come in. Uh, they, they cleaned out a lot of, you know, they took the horses, the mules, they took the corn, uh, they took milk. They, they just, it's, it's fall time and they loaded up and they took a lot of produce and, and provisions that you would need to actually make it through the, the winter time during the Civil War in 1862. Um, during that time, some men were arrested here um, so we got Major Methan that was actually arrested over at the Casey House. They're out on the prairie, 42 soldiers, Confederate soldiers hear about it as they show up kind of late here. They attack the cavalry there and it's, it's not a good thing. They ended up going back to taking prisoners, killing 14 and taking prisoners going back to Springfield. They come another raid in November. Um, it's, it's not a good thing. Men are arrested. They are taken to Springfield, Missouri and to the Union Federal Prison. Mike Yoakum is in that number. He is released, according to Silas Turnbow, he is released from there. He's not feeling well. He's very ill. He's 63 years old. You know, in the prison, they don't probably didn't have the medical care, the food, the sustenance you need. And so he basically gets out of prison. He ends up almost just basically crawling 
to a friend's house down the road to the Campbells. Did you ever hear of Campbell Street? Same family in Springfield, Missouri. So he ends up going there and as he gets there, they kind of try to nurse him as best they can and he just dies and they bury him somewhere on the farm throughout that area region. And uh, we really don't know where it's at. And one of the best uh, historians that actually, you know, has gone through that, his name is Lynn Morrow. And Lynn even said, it's, it's really doubtful we'll ever find his grave, but we know he's up in that general area buried. And Silas Turnbow documented that and Mike Yoakum is Fanny Yoakum Talbert's brother. And so this lady has the connections. You know, in, in, in history, a lot of times, a lot of the history rests on the, on the guy's shoulders of making all the connections. But isn't it wonderful that we can actually use a lady's name, you know, doing genealogy research in the past, man. It's really difficult because sometimes they'll go Mrs. Yoakum. Well, Cotton Pickin, what's her name? Or Mrs. James Yoakum. Yeah, well, okay. What's her name? Where did she come from? Fortunately enough, people have documented this family of the Yoakums and the Talberts that we can still put a good trace on what's actually going on. I'll tell you what, I want to thank you so much for everyone that has been helping out with us subscribing to our channel. A couple questions. Um, I have some people asking me, are you, are you, do you only do cemeteries? No, we don't only do cemeteries. I fell down the cemetery hole, okay? I just fell in the pit, been having fun uh, picking out these juicy morsels of history that connects us to the Ozarks, to Tennessee, over, uh, you know, over into the Eastern seaboard. Just a wonderful experience here. Even though we are remote here in the Ozarks, we are not abandoned. We have ties and relationships across the Ozark Plateau and on east. And so I really enjoy doing that. So other things that we're going to be doing here in the future, um, I really want to do, you know, I do a lot of White River. There is a fork of the White River and it's called the Buffalo Fork of the White River. And today we don't call it the Buffalo Fork of the White River that often. It's the Buffalo River. It's, it's a national river. It's, it's a beautiful river. Uh, sometimes in the midsummer when you paddle that thing, you're going to have to really paddle. It's, it's not a river that has huge rapids. Now, if you can go up, I, I was raised and I went on the Norfolk River a lot. The first time I went on the Buffalo River, I about wore my, I, I was like, where's the rapids? Summertime, it starts to slow down, but the beauty, you need to go on it slow, but the beauty of the Buffalo River and those high escarpments and, and bluffs, absolutely stunning beautiful so we're, we're gonna we're gonna learn about the buffalo river i have maps from 186 1896 excuse me 1896 i have maps from the corps of engineers i've got the uh official reports of the corps of engineers i went through those and i've read those reports absolutely amazing and i have the maps and i have digitized those maps and we're going to show those maps here in ozarks history and we're going to go down from rush arkansas which was a huge mining area and a mining town and camp and all the way down to the confluence into the buffalo river right by buffalo city it's going to be a wonderful uh, journey through the maps and we're going to listen to some official reports and have fun with that the last thing I want to mention is our little Trapper's Trowel that we are running on special right now at Cabela's Bass Pro, $12.99. You cannot beat that price. And look at this. Look at this little blade right here. You can take this blade and you can sharpen. You wear this blade out, you can sharpen it again. So you don't have to be a trapper to use this. Um, it's 22 inches. Pretty hard steel right here. It's cold rolled steel and it's, it's sharp. It'll dig into the ground. If you ever dull it, all you have to do is just take it to a grinder and just sharpen it up again, and it will cut into the dirt. It's one of the best tools you can ever use for trapping, for gardening. So if you're out digging something up, this is what you need to use. Uh, well, I wanna thank you so much for joining us today on Ozarks History. Thank you for liking and smashing that subscribe button. We could not do this if it wasn't without you. We will really appreciate your patronage and we have some other things coming online and projects here um, to, for support. We have Patreon and our Patreon channel and our website is gonna be up and running in another week. For those who have asked about other support, uh, we're gonna open up our Patreon and thank you so much for all your generosity. 
This is Vince Anderson inviting you to join us very soon as we head down the Buffalo River in Ozarks history. See you then. Bye-bye.